In alhamdulillah, wa salat, wa salam Allah, wa rasulullah. We're continuing with the hadiths from Sahih Muslim. We, we talked about gifting in Islam. We talked about inheritance in Islam. And now today we're going to talk about the wheel. We're going to talk about uh, the wheel, Kitab el Wasiya, which is the book of bequests. The book of bequest. Now, I already told you guys that Islam encourages us, anybody who owes any money to anyone and anyone who has property is encouraged to have a last will and testament. And again, a will is defined as something that, will, uh, that you will leave behind to your inheritors. And again, every Muslim should have a will if you own property or if you owe people. And again, um, in Islam, contracts do not have to be in writing. They can be verbal, but it is strongly encouraged that we put them in writing. So every Muslim should have a will. And we already talked about this in a previous class. And uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it is the duty of a Muslim who has something which is to be given as a bequest to not have it in his possession for more than two nights without writing it down as a will. So there you go. So anyone who has something that's property, or something that you owe to someone. You owe, say I owe somebody some money or something, I should write it down. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said it is not proper for a Muslim who has something to bequeath to spend even three nights without having his will written down in regard to it. And Ibn Umar tells us that when he heard the prophet say that, he said he never went a night without having his will with him. So again, that's the evidence. Those are the hadiths to prove it, guys. You know, we should all have a will. And I told you to go to my website, sunnafollowers.net. Click on the documents, the article section. There's a last will. You can download it. Written by Dr. Ibrahim Jamali. It's a legal will. All you have to do is fill in the blanks and notarize it and give a copy to your local mosque, to your guardian, to your lawyer, or whoever is in charge of your estate. Or in charge of you. Okay? And we talked before about how in Islam, there are four categories of people who don't inherit. We talked about how a non-Muslim cannot inherit from a Muslim and vice versa. And remember I taught you guys that however Islam allows for us to be able to leave one third of our possessions to anyone we want to. Well, here's the hadith that many of you are asking about that. We have the hadith, whereas one of the companions uh, said the prophet came to visit him when he was sick and he thought he was dying. So he said to the prophet, oh, prophet, you can see the pain I am in. And I am a money, a man who has a lot of money, but I don't have anyone to inherit from me except for one daughter. He said, I only have one daughter. I have no sons. I just have one daughter. He says, so should I give two-thirds of my property and charity for the sake of Allah? And uh, the prophet said, no. So he said, well, should I give half of it away for the sake of Allah? And the prophet said, no. The prophet said, give one-third in charity, and that is enough. He said, leave the rest to your daughter because to leave your inheritors rich is better than leaving them poor and leaving them to have to beg from other people. So leave whatever you have to your inheritors, just one third for charity. The rest goes to your inheritors. So here you can see guys, that's the hadith. So 
non-Muslims do not inherit from Muslims and vice versa. So what do you do? You have two alternatives. If you have non-Muslim children and you would like for them to be well taken care of after your death, you should give them what you have now while you're living. Or you can leave one third as a gift to whoever you want. Or say, for example, you like, oh my gosh, I like learning from Sunnah followers. I like to leave something, you know, to keep that website going in the future. I've learned so much about Islam from Sunnah followers. Can I leave ha a half of my, of my estate to Sunnah followers? No. But if you want, you could leave a third. You could leave a third as a gift to SunnahFollowers.net, to Sister Layla or whatever. Or a lot of people like to leave some money for the mosque, the mosque that they uh, attend. No, you don't leave half of your money. Now, this is what the Kafirs do. A lot of them die and they leave their money to charity organizations. You know, we can only leave one third as charity. The rest has to go to your inheritors. So that's the Hadith addressing that. And that third can be to any charity organization. I had one sister say, Sister Layla, I love animals. Can I put in my wheel that one third of my assets go to the, uh, the shelters for uh, animals? If that's what you want to do, yes, because that's an act of charity. So if you want to leave one third of your inheritance to an animal shelter, <clears throat> knock yourself out. That one third can go to any lawful charity that you want it to go to, okay? And also, Islam teaches us that a good thing to do for a person that does die who's Muslim is to give in charity on their behalf. A lot of people say, Sister Layla, my mother died and she was a good Muslim. What can I do for her? You can make dua for her, asking Allah to forgive her of her sins. And you can also make a donation to the mosque or to this website or something on her behalf. We have the hadith where as a man came to the prophet and said, Oh, prophet of Allah, my father died and he left behind property without making a will. Would he be relieved of this burden if I gave in charity on his behalf? The prophet said, yes, go ahead and give in charity for him. Then we have another hadith, whereas a woman said, my mother died. And I think she would have uh, made, uh, made a will and would have given in charity if she could have. So can I give in charity on her behalf? The prophet said, yes. In fact, the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when a person dies, all his actions come to an end except three. The knowledge that he left behind that the people benefit from will continue to be a blessing for him. Also, the supplication of a righteous child will continue to be a blessing for him. And the third is any recurring charity that he left behind. So again, yeah, this is one of the best things you can do for a deceased Muslim is give in charity on their behalf. There's a sister here at our website. She gives $50 a month. She's one of my regular con contributors. She gives $50 a month every month and she's been doing it for three years on behalf of her mother who died because her mother used to be one of my regular students. And when her mother died three years ago, her mother said, please, you know, support Sunnah followers on my behalf. And so her daughter makes that $50 payment every month on behalf of her mother. And this is recurring charity that'll be in her mother's favor. So again, that's what you can do for a deceased person. We don't cook food for them. We don't sit around reading the Quran together every 40 days either. What we do for a person that dies is we make dua. We ask Allah to forgive them of their sins 
and we we give in charity on their behalf okay also this leads us to another question that many people ask did the prophet muhammad have a will did he leave anything behind well let's look at this first hadith here one of the companions said i asked another one if the prophet made a will he said no so then i said well if the prophet didn't have a will then why should i have one why would he command us to have a will if he didn't have one and this is how people are today too well if the prophet didn't do it why should i well as aisha said the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't have any money to leave behind he didn't have any goats or sheep or camels to leave behind the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam gave all anything that he received in this world he gave it away in charity what he left behind is his knowledge the prophets of allah they don't leave behind inheritors instead they leave behind knowledge the knowledge that we had that we gain about a law is the inheritance that's left behind by the prophets alayhi salam and our prophet muhammad left his knowledge behind so no the prophet muhammad did not have a will because he didn't need one he didn't have anything to leave behind whatever money he received he gave it away in charity but what he did leave behind is his legacy, his sunnah. And that's what we follow today. Now, there are some deviants out there who want to say that the prophet did leave a will and that he left in his will that Ali should be the leader after him. This is what the Shiites believe, and this is not correct. We have the hadith here where it was mentioned to Aisha that the prophet left a will naming Ali to be his successor. She said, oh, really? When did he make this will? Where's the proof? She said, the prophet died in my arms on my lap. She said, so if he made a will saying that Ali should be his successor, then I would know. So this is a lie that the Shiites say too. He did not leave a will naming Ali as his successor. That's not true either. Instead, before the prophet died, before his sickness really got bad, this is what he said. He said, leave, he said, I will make a will about three things. Number one, turn out the polytheists from the arabian territory in other words he said i leave behind this request that my successors remove from arabia any pagans and all pagans i also request that hospitality be shown to the foreign delegations like i used to show them so those are the two things that the prophet requested before he died that the pagans be removed from Arabia and that we Muslims show hospitality to the foreign people who come seeking help and seeking knowledge. That's all he left behind along with his knowledge. But he did not leave anything behind naming Ali as his successor. So what do we learn from these hadiths? Well, we learn first of all that Islam allows a person to leave up to one third of his wealth to whomever he or she chooses, but no more than one third. Also, we learn that if your inheritors are poor, it is you know you don't want to leave anything to anyone but them. So if you have a, a poor relatives and you don't have that much to leave behind, leave it all to them. We also learn that it is encouraged and better to reduce your will to writing. And Islam encourages whoever has something that's of any value to give or whoever owes anything to have a will with him. We also learn that any charity given on behalf of a deceased person, this is, these are blessings 
that will continue to benefit that person after death. Okay, and also we learn that our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not leave anything behind except his knowledge, his sunnah, his example. Whatever wealth he had, he gave away in charity before he died. Instead, what he did was he begged that his successors remove from Arabia all of the pagans and that they show hospitality to the foreign people who come there seeking help and seeking knowledge. So that's what we walk away having learned from these hadiths today. Now tomorrow what I'm going to do is give you a quiz to cover what we've discussed today and then we're going to move on to the next chapter of Sahih Muslim. So I want you guys to ponder the meaning of these hadiths. Make sure that every one of you has a wheel. Again, go to our website, sunnafollowers.net, click on the library, click on the articles. You will see uh, a link there to, the, uh, to, uh, to making a wheel. Click on that and download it, and please fill in the blanks so that way you yourself will have a wheel. On that note, we'll stop right here. If you have any questions or comments, you can type them on the screen.